Do you want to know who makes better t-shirt? Uniqlo or Cos? I did an Instagram story asking which you thought was the better t-shirt and you were 50-50 on this. I'm going to do the t-shirt comparison in five points. The fit, the fabric, the sewing construction, the price, and the value you're paying for the t-shirt. Let's start off with the fit. For both Uniqlo and Cos, I try on the medium. For the neckline, Uniqlo had a better fit than Cos, which the neckline didn't lay as flat. For Uniqlo, there's definitely some fit issues. If you look at the sleeve, you see the drag lines. That's an indication there's something wrong with the sleeve. So it could be one of three things. It could be the cross shoulders are too narrow, the cross front is too narrow, or the sleeve cap is too short. The second issue is the bust line. So if you look at the side seam, you see all that rippling and buckling. That's an indication there's not enough bust projection. And when that happens, you can see your bra band at the side seam. Sometimes you can fix the problem by sizing up. But this isn't the case with Uniqlo because you can still see the drag line on the sleeve. And you can still see the rippling at the side seam where the bust line is because there's not enough bust projection. See in the cost t-shirt, it fits better. At the sleeve cap, there's no drag lines. And then if you look at the bust projection, there isn't that rippling you have the side seam. Most people don't look at the back fit of a style that they're trying on. But if you look at the back fit, it will tell you if the clothes is done right or it's done wrong. Looking at the back of the Uniqlo's t-shirt, you can see that the cross shoulders are narrow and also the cross back is narrow. Which is why you have those drag lines on the sleeve. Also, you can tell that the back pattern is done wrong, which is why it's bubbling so much in the back. If you look at the cost t-shirt, you see the cross shoulder and the cross back is fitting better. Also, the back isn't bubbling like the Uniqlo t-shirt. If you look at the overall fit of the Uniqlo t-shirt, it's cut to the length of tucking. And then if you look at the bust, like I said, there's not enough bust projection. And it's cut very slim. So you see the muffin topping that's happening at the waistline. So this is all the fit issue I have with the Uniqlo t-shirt. This is the fit of the cost t-shirt. If you see, it's cut shorter, so it's not meant for tucking. If you look around the bust line, you see there's enough room for bust projection. If you look around the waistline, you see that isn't that muffin topping like you have with the Uniqlo t-shirt. Next, let's talk about the fabric. If you look at the Uniqlo weave, you can see that it's a twill weave with a finer yarn compared to Cos, which is using a loop weave and a thicker yarn. In fashion, we have a term called GSM, which stands for grams per square meter. It tells you the weight of the fabric. I can tell you by the hand feel from the Uniqlo and the Cos t-shirt. The Cos t-shirt is definitely beefier. Both t-shirts were made of 100% cotton, but as you can see, not all cotton is of equal quality. Next, let's talk about the sewing construction of the t-shirts. The way the neckline is finished on the Uniqlo t-shirt is done with a cover stitch front to back. This is done with a single operation through a feeder, so you see this on one shoulder, and you see this visible joint seam on the other side of the shoulder. The way the cast t-shirt neckline is done is the proper way of doing it. You see how the cover stitch is covering both the neckband and the t-shirt? First, you attach the neckband together to create an invisible seam. So when you sew the neckband into the t-shirt, it is a clean finish. Then you attach the neckband to the t-shirt with a double stitch cover stitch. Then you attach the back neckline with this bias binding to hold the shape of the back neckline because you tend to bend over a lot more. So to prevent it from stretching, you add this bias binding. For the sleeve and hemline, Unico has used this pick cover stitch for the finishing because it's a lower end finishing because it requires less thread count and also it's very visible. For the cost t-shirt, they use a double stitch cover stitch, which is a lot more sturdier because it has a higher thread count. In terms of sewing construction, Uniqlo had used a faster and easier assembling method because it's a lot more cost effective to do it this way. The results end up with the garment looking cheaper and looking ill-fitting. In comparison to the cost t-shirt, this is the proper way to assemble the t-shirt construction. Not only does it look more expensive, but the fit will be better. Next, let's talk about the price. The Uniqlo t-shirt was $14.90. The Uniqlo t-shirt is made in Vietnam. Here's the cost of living comfortably in Vietnam. And the cost t-shirt was $45. The cost t-shirt is made in Portugal. Here's the cost of living comfortably in Portugal. Lastly, let's talk about the value of the price. This is based on fit. To recap, look at the neckline of the cost t-shirt, the bust projection, the sleeve cap, the pro lines of the sleeve cap. Look at the waistline and how it's muffin topping, and then look at the hemline. 
then the Lacoste t-shirt, look at the neckline, look at the bust projection, look at the sleeve cap, look at where it's falling. The fabric, the sewing construction, the price, which is also contingent on the labor cost of the country that it's made in. Based on these four elements, I would say that the value is definitely in the cost t-shirt, so I bought mine.